what's up guys? Welcome to day 14 and today we're going to be talking about scope, imports, packages. We're doing a lot of stuff that you probably kind of already have figured out a little bit because we've been doing so much stuff so quickly, but these are kind of things that are left in the background and I haven't really explained super well, but we are going to get into it deeper today. So the first thing I'm going to talk about are packages. And basically, a package, if we open NetBeans here, we can get this guy, you know, going loading it up. Basically a package is like every program that we've created so far. So our library catalog, that was a package. Our guess the number game, that was a package. We had all of these packages and then inside of these packages we had files such as our classes and now it's going to be loading up here and we can mess with it. And of course I have everything open because I'm crazy. And like if we go to this library catalog here, this library catalog was an entire package and then inside of this package we had classes that went together. So basically a package package is a group of similar types of classes and so our book and library went together so we put them in the same package and so forth. So basically there are two main types of packages. You have built-in packages and then user-defined packages. Everything that we've created is a user-defined package. And so again our library catalog, our array practice, our animal, those were user-defined packages. But there are actually many that are built into Java that we've been using and haven't even known about it. If you look at this chart we have like java.util, Java without lang, we have a bunch of things that come with us, and sometimes we actually import these into our programs and so we can use the stuff that are in those packages. And when I say stuff, I mean the methods, the data types, stuff like that that's declared in the package. So say, like our library catalog, it has, you know, a method to get the current day or to get the book collection, but there may be methods out there that aren't as specific as these that we may want to use for other programs. And so an example of this would be our random method. And so inside one of our packages, we used like random and we had to import something and random can be used for so many different things. And so it's considered a built-in package because I don't have to get anything from the internet to use it. I can just write import java.util and it's there. But of course, anything that is not in java.lang, we have to import. And so like our java.util, we have to import it, but anything that's in java.lang, we do not have to import. And so how do we import things? I've been talking about importing, but what, how do we do it? Well, if we go back to our you know, library catalog here that I have open, we have the import statement, which is just import, and then we have Java, which is kind of like the outer package that we're using. And then like more specifically, we're using the util package from Java, and then we're using the hash map class from java.util. And so usually, if I can write a little comment here, we do import, which is a keyword. So no matter what you're importing, you're going to have this import keyword. And then you're going to do like package one. This would be the outer package, the top level, you know. And when I say level, I mean like object versus animal versus dog. Like object would be the top level and then you'd have animal and then you'd have dog. That's kind of like the same parallel here, except it doesn't have to do with inheritance or abstract classes or anything like that. It's just like the top level is Java. And then the second level it would be util, and so this would be, you know, package two. And then you just kind of keep going until you're at the package that you want, and we'll add a two here. And then when you finally get to the package, you know, you're looking for package and we'll say, then you do dot and then you do the class name that you want. And so this would be the class either that you want to like create things from. And so like here we used our hash map. Down here we have our hash map and then the data types in it. If we want to create a hash map, we would import that. And once we have that instance, we can like use the methods from that class, you know, stuff like that. Or if you want everything that's in java.util, you don't want a specific class, you just want to have access to everything because when you're coding on, you know, later, you want to like have access to everything and not worry about imports. And so instead of doing dot class, you would do dot star. And again, you'd have the semicolon, you know, Java. And basically the dot asterisk increases compilation time because you're importing more things. But, you know, if you're using all of those things, you know, it wouldn't really matter. But usually it's best to, if you're using just one specific class from a package, to do dot that class because it's more efficient, less overhead for your program. And so now we're going to do a little example. We are going to create a new package. And so I'll close all of these up here. And with our blank slate here, we are going to do file new project, you know, creating an entire project and then inside of our project, we are going to make a new class. So we do this and then we have our project name. We're just going to call this calendar practice because we're going to make like a little calendar in here. I'll save it to my desktop, you know, per usual. It'll finish up. 
With this, we will create a new project and then inside of our project, we will have source packages. These are user-defined packages versus you know the built-in packages. And then inside of this package, we have our file that holds our class. And so the first thing that we are gonna do is add some imports. So between these two little sections, we are gonna write import and then we're gonna do a little space and then Java dot util dot and notice how it comes up here because it's built in which is awesome we're going to do dot calendar there we go and it you know fills in for us which is great and then we're going to do import java dot util dot date and there we go and they're both imported individually and so we have the calendar here the date here there we go notice i could also do import java dot util dot star and this would not be a good idea here because notice if I do dot, look at all these classes. If I do dot star, guess what? Every single one of these classes will be imported into my program. But of course, I'm not even using half of the, like I'm not even using a fraction of these, so why would I wanna import every single one? If I did import every single one, then I would not need these two statements. Does that kind of make sense? If I import all of them, then I don't need to import them individually. So I am just gonna uncomment that, we'll recomment this. Those are kind of like the two big ways that you do imports. You either do dot the class name once you get to the package you want, or you can just import the entire package, which is discouraged, you know, because it increases your compilation time, you know, the amount of time it takes to like run your program. So what about the code? Well, let's get to it. Inside of our main, we are gonna do a couple, you know, simple lines. We're not gonna actually create, you know, a full class with the methods, the properties. We're just messing around in our main here. We are gonna write calendar, cal equals calendar, dot get instance, open close parentheses, you know, semicolon. Then we are gonna do cal dot add, calendar dot date, one, there we go, and we need to capitalize dates. And so basically what this is doing, we are getting an instance of our calendar you know, out there in the world, and then we're gonna add a date, and we're adding the date tomorrow. If we wanna add today, we do zero. If we wanna add 100 days from now, we would do 100. And so we'll just do zero and print out today's date later on. And so we're adding a date to our calendar, and this date here just says, okay, what are you adding? A year, a date, you know? It's the field that we're adding to our calendar. And then the next statement that you are going to write is system.out print all in cal dot get time open close parentheses you know semicolon that and then we'll run it here it'll go do its thing and notice what it prints out it prints out friday which is you know the day of the week then september 25th and it is 2015 still you are probably watching this way in the future you know and so yeah so we print out today's date if i want to print out 100 days from now we change that to 100 you know that's probably closer to where you guys are in the future on Sunday, January 3rd. Third day of code, Oh, how cute. Okay, well you are way past that now. Okay, you know, reminiscing here. And we can actually change the format of our calendar if we're curious and you know, want to do that. And to do this, we are gonna do string format equals new simple date format, open quote, y, 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 dash, month, month, dash dd and that's basically saying like okay I want it to be in this format and we need to import something else because you know I forget things so we import this new thing and notice what is really cool here is that well it's not very exciting I mean it's kind of cool okay and so here if we like uncommented this and like recommented this we would still have a pro like a problem because java.txt is not the same package as java.util. So we could do java.txt.star and we'd have to do java.util.star and it would import so much things, but we can actually just import like three simple classes and it's so much faster, so much less compile time, which means like the time between you hitting the play button and then it actually going. And so we want to run things faster. And so of course we don't want this java.util guy here. So we will comment that guy out. And we have an error. And that's because I made this a string and not a simple date format. So we'll do simple date format. So the next thing that we're gonna do is string formatted equals format dot format. And naming conventions, let's make this format one, format one. 
And inside here, we're going to do cal.getTime. And so what this is saying is make cal.getTime this type of format. And so now if we print system.out.println formatted, which is the get time thing, but formatted to equal this format, we press play. Notice we have the year, 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 the month, and then the date. And notice it's 100 days from now, and so that's why it is there. And so we did 15 days from now. Depending if I release these correctly, we need to add how many days math? 12, maybe 11 to get the 14th. Yeah, 14th day of code. So the last thing we are gonna talk about, this is gonna be super quick, super easy, and it's gonna be about scope. And so if we open our animal package again, and you don't really need your animal package, you're not gonna code anything new. I'm just gonna like show you how something called scope works. And so you might notice like, here in our animal class, we have this thing age, and we have like other parameters that we use, but we can't use them like outside of a certain method. Okay, I will write code, I lied to you. But you know, don't code this, like you, you should just look and see what happens. And so we are gonna do public void do something, open, close, and we'll say string thing. And then we'll system dot out dot print all in. I'm doing plus thing. Okay, so notice when I have this method here, I can't access thing outside of this, like these curly brackets. Like it was made inside these curly brackets. It is used, it's passed into this method. So it's only usable inside of the method. Kind of like how we do f of x equals x plus five. This is my favorite example of how methods work. And so if we have something like this, x is only, if we have a different function, that's like f like of z d or something equals z plus d, like you're not gonna be able to access x in this unless you define it here. But if you have this global variable that's like happy equals 10, and then you have plus happy plus happy, obviously it will work. And so if we have plus happy plus happy, does that kind of make sense? So where something de is declared is like where it lives. And so this int age here, it's able to like get stuff from here and you'd be able to access it inside of these methods as well because it was defined in a broader scope. So basically scope refers to the lifetime and accessibility of a variable. How large the scope is depends on where the variable was created and declared. And so basically we have four levels. And so we have the class level, which is like your properties. Anything declared as a property can obviously be accessed inside of your methods. We have the method level, which is what I just talked about here, where you have thing is at the method level and you can only access it inside the method. You have public versus private variables, which doesn't really have to deal with scope but it's kind of, you know, in there and that you can only access it at certain times. And then finally you have a loop level. And so of course I wanna open up every package today. So if we go to, and it's not even in my recents. Oh my God, okay. We go to loop practice here. We also have like a scope for loops. And so like our, let's say, go down here to practice for loop. Like our X and Y, they're only accessible within the curly brackets they are created in. And so X can only be used inside of here and Y can only be used inside of the inner curly brackets. And so if I try to access like Y equals Y plus five, it's gonna error because it's not gonna know what Y is because we're accessing it outside of its lifetime, outside of its scope. So yeah, that's scope. And so that is it for this video. So what did we do today? We talked about packages and like what they need inside of a project. And then inside of the packages, you have classes. And then inside of the classes, you have import statements, which can basically get methods from other packages and allow you to like use them in your code, which is awesome. We also talked about the difference between built-in and user-defined packages. And so user-defined is anything that obviously you create. Built-in packages are like the java.lang, java.util, you know, anything else, the random package, like anything like that, that is a built-in package that you don't actually have to go to the internet and download something. It's just, you know, built-in when we downloaded this stuff in the very beginning.
How do we import things? Well, we do import and then the package, you know, whatever package it's gonna be that we're looking at, it's gonna be the top level package and then you do dot and then go into like how many other packages you wanna get as specific and then when you finally get to like your core package that's at the, you know, the dot util, the dot lang, the dot text, then you do dot and then the class name, but if you don't know what class you want or you want access to everything, you do dot star, which will give you everything in the class. But of course that's discouraged because it increases the overhead of your program. It makes your program run slower. It's very annoying. You know, you wanna try to have as little imports as you can without it hindering your program. Then we learned how to access the calendar inside of our Java program. We learned how to print stuff out to the console, how to format, you know, our dates, and stuff like that, so that was really cool. And then lastly, we learned about scope, how it means the lifetime, the accessibility of a variable. You have a class level scope, a method level scope, and then like a level for your loop. And so basically where something is declared, any like curly brackets open, you know, below it, though it can be accessed in those. But once you know that final curly bracket ends, you cannot access that method anymore. Its lifetime is over. If you want to use it again, then you need to save it in something else that was declared, you know, higher up inside of the project. And by higher up, we mean like instead of in a method, it's declared like at the class level. And so that's it for this video. The Hacker Rank Challenge is down below in the description. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video. I hope you learned something and I will see you tomorrow.